Okay, I would like to throw this topic out to you guys because if I'm sitting in the owner's suite and that's my freaking checkbook sitting there, I'm blowing the whole thing up. This is beyond a joke. Hmm. 14 yards of offense in the second half. That's the offensive line that you broke training camp with and went, yeah, I feel good about it. That's an embarrassing, embarrassing team we look out, out there. I, I got to agree with Alex. Uh, everybody's up for the, the trade block here, and let's start over. I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I, I've seen it. I, right. I've seen it. It's not going to get any better this year. And do I want to go in next year? And honestly, I mean, I, we're, I'm talking all the way. I'm not talking about just the coaches. I'm talk, I've seen Ryan Pace bring in. But you, know, you got to give Pace some credit for the defense. I'm talking about the quarterback, Coach, because, oh, okay. because the quarterback, okay. if I, I don't know, I haven't seen enough of right. Bray, but I don't think Bray's the guy. All right? No. Oh, I don't no. think Mitch is the guy. I don't think <clears throat> Foles is the guy. Somebody has to stay, right. but do you want this, this – do you want Pace bringing in another no. quarterback? No. Like he brought in what, the six eight guy. What was his name? I, still I, six six. I, six six. six. I think yeah. Mike, Glennon. Least, Mike Glennon. At the very least, if you're the owner or Ted Phillips, whoever's in mm -hmm. charge up there, you have to get in a room and say, how do we come to our decisions on offense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, how do we get to offense is the problem. Yeah. Offense right. is the problem. How do we get to these decisions mm -hmm. on offense? How do we get the decision that this offense line was good enough yep. that we had to get rid of three coaches, bring these three coaches in? And in, now, I mean, obviously, injuries always play a factor, Coach. Like, you know, it can really affect yep. your team. But how do we get worse? No. Somebody well, said something. It's an <laughs> offensive thing. I just want to get, mm -hmm. get that out there. I mean, mm -hmm. they look who they've drafted on defense. They've drafted good players. Mm -hmm. Johnson, you know, I mean. Well, they, they, tra Ro they, you know, they traded yeah. three picks for Khalil Mack. Right? I mean, Roquan, I mean, they, they've really, I mean, that defense is good. And, and, and Ryan had to make decisions on that. Yep. So I think the whole conversations need to be about the offense, really. You know? And if we, we want to win, you know, are we, how, much, how many times are we going to keep experimenting and, and trying to be the, get the offensive gurus out here to do something in Chicago that has never been done? You know, mm -hmm. there, are, there are ways that Chicago has been able to be effective and they win, and, and, it's, and it's, it's tested true. You know, defense, special teams, run the ball on offense. All right, I have a question. That, my biggest concern is not so much, okay, Ryan Fubar, the quarterback position. We know that. That's yeah. whatever. He's, that's got to get fixed. The people that hire the general manager, the people <laughs> above Ryan Pace <laughs> who are making those goes. decisions, <laughs> that's the problem. You either got to go hire 96-year-old Ernie Accorsi to help you because you're not confident enough to hire an executive or – you are completely clueless on what you're looking for. That's where it's got to get fixed. Agree? Well, 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 they put their trust in what they call, we've all been part of Bears for a while, and what they mm -hmm. call football people, right? Mm -hmm. They hire these people and they let them make all the decisions. Mm -hmm. And you wonder about like a 43-year-old general manager and a 42-year-old head coach getting in a room and making decisions across the board on their offense. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't work out. And, and I know coach is saying Ryan Pace built the defense. Well, look. The big problem on offense is Kevin White was his first pick. He didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Aronis right. Kersu was his first lineman taken. He didn't work out. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not a mystery why this offense is bad, right? And then you trade two ones and a three mm -hmm. for a defensive end. Yep. And then you sign a $70 million other defensive end. You trade a couple yeah, and then your, your quarterback. Your D-line is yep. worth $400 million. Your O-line is <clears throat> worth $100 million, mm -hmm. And you're wondering why your D-line is better. Mm -hmm. I'm confused why everybody doesn't know why your D-line is bad. <laughs> well, that's why, because you're, you're not investing in the O-line. You're, you're not doing it, and you're not hitting on those players. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what it is. You don't have the picks because not just money. those players. I'm, you're talking moving up to get Leonard Floyd, who's no longer here. Yep. You're moving up to get um, Mr. Trubisky. Trubisky. You, hit, you hit on Kevin White. You hit on Mr. Trubisky. Yeah. We're having a different conversation. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Or if you take different players. I mean, there were other players. And, there. But to Cap's point, if, if you do blow everything up, and, and, you know, I don't know how many times that is now in so many in 10 years that yes. you've blown everything up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you have to start looking at the guys who are doing the hiring who are the guys you're bringing Bingo. in. Bingo. Well yeah. said. Bingo. And then I, I want to say so Cap would move on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, here here's the other thing when I'm watching NFL Network today and they have a reporter down in Miami and he said, boy, the Dolphins really feel like they stole Adam Shaheen from the Bears. Okay, either Ryan made a bad pick because that's what it looked like here, or Matt couldn't figure out how to use a guy that they just signed to a $9 million extension. Now, I know that's not huge money, 
but they really like that kid down there. Hironis Grassou, who was not good here, is playing in San Francisco on a team that consistently runs the ball effectively. So why is it Raheem Mostert? He's in our camp. Oh, he's scoring touchdowns in San Francisco until he got hurt. What is the problem that guys come here and they can't freaking get on the field or play well? They go somewhere else and they figure out their skill set. That's what drives me freaking insane. Some yeah, guys yeah, aren't. But, but you have to be yeah. honest, too, right? Horonis Kersu is like the fourth string center in San Francisco. They've lost right. three centers, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and Adam Shaheen now, Cap, I mean, they paid him like an average tight end. Mm -hmm. That's basically what he was when they and signed had, Jimmy Graham. he had Graham, every opportunity. Drafted Cole Komet. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. Now, look, the, 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 I know what Cap is saying. The draft's been bad. They haven't developed on offense, and they have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about firing people. Can I talk about my kickoff? <laughs> yes. Can I talk about my kickoff return? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, you start. Let's break down some plays. One of the low bright spots was Cordero <laughs> Patterson's <laughs> kick problem. return TD. <laughs> Dave, take us through it. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Let's let's look at something good here. Something positive. Okay. Mm -hmm. A touchdown. This means touchdown out there. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> the the uh, and, and, and what we're gonna have and the big thing. You talk about when uh, when you talk about kickoff return is that everybody has to stay on their feet, and that you may be saying, God, that, who wouldn't know that? A five-year-old would know that. Well, you'd be surprised <laughs> how many guys go out there and they try to go to the ground and they grab. So right here, the thing that's impressive about this return is you do see everybody's got a hat on somebody. And now it's really just playing basketball. You're not going to knock anybody down and jump on top of them. And right here, we've got a single block right here. And now, okay, we're getting beat right here. But the big thing is don't hold him, okay? Let the guy make – he's got to make one guy miss. I used to always tell my return guys, punt and kickoff. There's going to be one guy free, and you've got to be good enough to make <clears throat> one guy miss. If you yeah. can't make one guy miss, then we've got to get another returner. Yeah. <laughs> so right here, he's going to make one guy miss. We've got a nice block Five. here. Up here is the key. Look at this. We got good position to kick out. We've got an extra cleanup guy coming, and we got a double team up here at the top. So it's it's a it's a well designed scheme, and obviously you got a playmaker back there carrying the ball, and uh, the guys stay with their blocks. He makes a guy miss, and then at the end when he gets up here about the 40, you're going to see him right here. This is this is what separates him, I think, from a lot of different return guys. His power. That's why they're playing at running back so much. I mean, he can run through, and that's what he ends up doing here. He, he breaks the line of scrimmage right here, okay, and then he runs through arm tackles, touchdown. Yep. It's good, and when he's fast. Too. And sometimes you got to get away with a, a legal block, too. Yeah. No, right there sometimes. <laughs> he's Referees not, don't he's see not it. holding unless they call it. <laughs> that's, that's right. right. No, no, when no, when, no, when he got up to the kicker, we all knew he was in trouble. The kicker was no, in no, trouble. No, no, number eight's There's right no now chance. saying to himself, do not let this guy yes. through. <laughs> he's nervous right now. Chance. He's 25 <laughs> yards away from me. He's nervous <laughs> right now. Yeah, you, you, you really don't want to kick this guy the ball very often. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. It's like Zimmer said that on the sideline. Yes. Yeah. Why don't kick that guy the ball? All in the Bears offensive line was struggling a lot tonight. Obviously, they're banged up. They're, right. you know, playing guys who weren't good enough to start at the beginning, so we shouldn't be surprised. But let's talk about your key play on a third down in the second yeah, quarter. Yeah, this, this was happening a lot um, to the Chicago Bears tonight. Zimmer did a nice job with his blitzes, and their blitz pickup package wasn't good enough. Ryan Nall is going to release, so these five have the five most dangerous they called three down on that side, so the center's sliding that way. So these two are responsible for the most dangerous two out of these four. Not an easy protection by any means, but Afedi's got to get in here to 54, which brings Coward down a squeeze. So sometimes they're guessing too much, and you saw tonight just how little these guys have played together mm -hmm. and how little Coward has played this so a Fetty comes down to 54. He, he calls what we call bluff, and he bluffs in and runs out. But once he's up in the, at the D lineman's heels, he is a down guy. So you have to count him. I don't know why. Can't see Coward here, but he's set out on this guy. So now 50 comes free. If a Fetty's going in, they got to yell what we call squeeze, and a Coward's got to come down and leave the widest, line, the widest guy alone. Smith is going to cover Nall. He's got him. And Foles has got to recognize that our Cody White here, and you're outnumbered, and the ball's got to come out. So Foles can help them out, especially when you have 
a brand new right tackle, the biggest thing, like Coach said, is when you have that many guys <clears throat> injured, Montgomery's injured, Massey's out, Daniels is out, you want to maybe see another tight end in there, guys helping with protection, mm -hmm. so get the ball out. Another thing to think about is, I don't even know if we saw one screen tonight mm -hmm. to kind of help out the D-line, the defense, the offensive line, and slow this rush down. And mm -hmm. what they'll do is, wherever the center points, they'll come away from that. So they know the center's sliding that way. We all use an L or an R car like Liz or Rip. We think that's very confusing and secret, but it's not. <laughs> so everybody knows where we're going, and these guys are blitzing away from that. And they fooled foes and Cody White here a couple times tonight. Obviously, Coward, not a lot of reps at right tackle with a Fetty, and they get fooled a couple times tonight. Mm. Can we put that very first picture back on again, Eric, for a second? Capper, I mean... Uh, th this is kind of interesting here. The very first picture of this play here. Can we do that? Stand by there getting it for you, coach. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, right here, and, and Olin had to block this, but Mike Zimmer, their, their head coach, when he was a defensive coordinator going back to the Bengals, he kind of started making this look right here. Double A gaps, is that what you called it? Yep. You know, kind of famous. And the whole thing, the play in that Olin's talking about, look how many guys are up here. Remember the old Bear 46 when Buddy Ryan and, and Mike Dick and them? The, half of the – we ran – I mean, we used to run the Bear to a degree, but half of it was trying to get the offensive linemen to try to figure out who was coming and who was dropping and who was twisting, right? Yes. I and mean, you guys ran it, you know. So right here, you got a similar look. Yep. You got all these guys up front. That puts some pressure. You got new linemen like you're oh, talking man. about. Now you're trying this to. This is smart. This is smart to yeah. do. And then. Absolutely. Right. It really is. Yeah, yeah. It goes to like something we've talked about real quick. Something I've noticed that we th I thought that Foles is going to be a lot better at this mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Organizing this, yeah. getting the ball out. So the way Coach Nagy wants to beat the Blitz is get everybody out, get Nall out, not very dangerous, only in the preseason. Get him out <laughs> and try to get people the ball. Get your get your <laughs> <laughs> weapons the ball in space, and he just you know it didn't work out tonight. <laughs> no, that that um chemistry yeah. on the offensive line. I mean, it plays a huge part. And right. right now, I mean, that's that's exactly what you're talking about. You got guys that are new at certain positions, and the chemistry's not there. And the craziest thing about this league now, it's a copycat league. So oh, understand. they've been seeing this since Atlanta. Right. Yeah, they've been seeing this for a while. It's, it's funny, it, it's not funny too, away. because you go to an old line meeting, and you know, as a center, you say, "Hey, I made the call," and the coward says, "Yeah, but I didn't hear it." <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, so yeah. the arguments start right <laughs> yeah, away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Nick Nick Foles was intercepted early on. It was a, mm -hmm. a tight window to try and fit it into Anthony Miller and Lance Vikings linebacker Eric Kendricks had a lot to do with the pick. Take us through it. He did. One of the things you don't see in this play right here is uh, before uh, Foles turned to the play side, he was looking him off to the left side, which is a, which is really smart for defensively. Uh, it, it keeps us at home before we can uh, set up and make a make a uh, break on it to the to the play side. As he turns to the play side, um, is this Miller? Yep. Yeah, it's Miller who who breaks in. It's a really tight window, and a lot of people wonder why the ball was thrown slightly behind Miller. Well, Bluffs quarterbacks can expect a, a, a linebacker play side. It's the backside linebacker that usually can steal the ball because the quarterbacks don't see the backside guy. So the play side guy is this middle middle uh, linebacker, uh, Hendrick Kendricks. And you have a small, really small window where once uh, Miller starts to make this break on this, uh, this dig route. And so the window is really small. He condenses the window is about right here, okay? And so when uh, when Foles makes the throw, it's slightly behind him, but in the reality, the window is so small. The window is so small, that was really the only window that he could have effectively got the ball to Miller. If he catches that ball, I think people are talking about how he's throwing him open as opposed to like he threw it in a bad spot. Like he's throwing it in the only spot that he could have so it don't get tipped or it doesn't get – um, intercepted right away, but unfortunately it was too high for Miller. I've always heard co offensive coaches, uh, uh, the coaches that I've been a part of, say you th we're throwing to a spot, not to a man. You know, so a lot of times when guys come out of that break, you know, they come out of that out route break, you know, there's a specific spot that they're mm -hmm. looking for. So a lot of them will come back to the ball mm -hmm. instead of breaking flat 
or anything mm -hmm. like that, allowing the def defender to uh, cut in front of him yep. and make a play on it. Which also surprises me on this play that Foles is still holding the ball here. He's, I think he should be letting the ball go now and anticipating Miller mm -hmm. coming free. If you remember when he came out of that Falcons game, mm -hmm. he told Miller mm -hmm. that, hey, if we get this coverage, run to the L. And I'm throwing it there. Like he he had already talked about it. So he had already he knows he he thinks about it. It's just he's not doing it on, on a consistent basis right now. Well, he sees where the weak side of the where where the open window is going to be. I think he's waiting for this guy because he doesn't see him yet. He doesn't mm -hmm. see him yet. So he's waiting to see how maybe how he's going to play it or if he's going to start to drift off and pass him off to maybe someone else or maybe to the middle uh, linebacker. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why, he, yep. you know, I'm assuming why he held the ball on the for and, and it's for interesting is this is the first third down of the game, right? And the old line was actually the Vikings defensive front is not as ferocious as we remember mm -hmm. was actually doing a pretty good job. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. blocking them. And then that's why a coach like, you know, you mm -hmm. start to dial up blitzes because you're actually getting blocked. And if mm -hmm. you just look at Mooney over here in the corner, yep, maybe the ball should have came out over there. And this is the offense's mm -hmm. problem. When one when one part is working, the other part isn't. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a yep. nice, don't you guys think it's a nice picture of, of the zone coverage right here, right in the position oh, yeah. of everybody in Minnesota. Look at all their mm -hmm. eyes on full. Yeah. Yep. I mean, this, yeah, I uh, mean, truly the only guy. I mean, I guess when you look at this steel shot, it is Mooney. It, yeah, it should go to Mooney. You never it's know. It's a steel you see shot, like right? Coaching yeah. shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a scene player right here. This is obviously covered too. This is a scene player. Obviously, you have your mic in the middle. Um, so a lot of quarterbacks will try to play off of that scene player um, mm -hmm. because he can't see where the receiver is. A lot of times you'll have a uh, they'll run that dig route. He'll uh, the the scene player will keep moving. The the wide receiver will sit or he'll keep going depending on what they yeah. see you do the week before. So I, I, I think that this is a play where if he connects on it, it's a 15 yard first down, whether he falls or not. Can mm -hmm. we uh, take a picture of this and send it to my phone? The O-line did a good job here. <laughs> kind, of a rare, kind of a rare occurrence this year. I want to nice save that. I'll put that up on my wall. Nice All right, one more. Alex, another interception in this game. This one by K-Mac when he dropped back into coverage and mm -hmm. was able to come up with a ball that looked like it was in the receiver's hands. The next thing you know, Khalil's mm -hmm. going the other way. Yeah, I always think it's interesting when you got your best pass rusher, um, Khalil Mack, dropping into coverage. But I guess you got to do it sometimes. And you got Barcavius Mingo down here. He's rushing, and typically it's the other way around. But I think it surprised the Cousins as well because he didn't expect Khalil Mack to be there. And in all honesty, I mean, this, this interception goes on Adam Thielen because he should have caught that ball. And when he juggled it, it gave Khalil Mack a chance to steal it away, and he did just that. I mean, he just he made a play. Uh, he's it's actually really good coverage on that other shot. You saw him sitting up under number two, and then he worked his way to number one yep. and got the interception, which is great. Um, so, and then right here, I mean, you see him he make a play, and then he's up the sideline. But these plays right here are the plays that we're talking about when you got to score. You got to score. What did he do here, and what did Coach Smith always tell Peanut, Vasher, when you get an interception, where you got to get to? You got to get to that end zone. You, you, you got to get to the numbers. Zone. I'm sorry. You, you got to get, get to the numbers. He ran straight to the sideline and he ran out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds around about the 40 yard line. You got to get to the numbers and that's where your blockers are. Get to the numbers and hey, let's lead him down the field. Same side of the field. Same, same side, side of, the field. of yeah. the field. Same side of the field. You have this yep. guy chosen to have number 33. Now, one thing number 33 will always do when that ball is taken, taken, uh, taken away. 33 is the first guy that's going to find every block possible to get mm -hmm. you into that end zone. Yep. That's what the rest of those, the, the rest of the 10 men have to get You're to right the here. numbers, find a block, force, somehow force the way to get uh, uh, Khalil Mack. Because that that's, how you, that's how you're going to win. Like this team right here, mm -hmm. this is how you have to win. As, as good as they played tonight, it wasn't enough. Yep. You know, it, it wasn't enough. So you got to score on defense. Yeah, then score on defense. I mean, that's because there's nothing else really, unless you say, what the hell with it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. you can't do that. So, okay, one last thing. Lord knows Nick Foles is about a 2016 Buick Regal. That's about what he is. He's not, you know, a great player. What? But we got 42 damn officials out there. He gets whacked in the side of the head with the official standing right freaking there mm -hmm. and no flag. How does that stuff happen? Oh, it happens all the time. I mean, offensive linemen hold all the time, you know. I mean, no, they don't no, call it. <laughs> you know, what what's, we talked about, though, when Mitch Trubisky got benched, I remember on this show we talked about, we said, I think this guy has only ever started 11 games in his, in his Correct. career. Correct. Yep. And we talked about Mitch needing to learn and stay ready. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. because this, like because this because we would see him again mm -hmm. yeah. at some point and, and, and who knows what their final decision is with Mitch's shoulder and Tyler Bray. But if you just looked at the history of Foles' career, mm -hmm. we talked about the fact that if Mitch could learn while Foles was in. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, the offensive line is a different offensive line and a lot of injuries now. But um, here, here it is. Here it is where, mm -hmm. where he's back up again. Mm -hmm. Cap, to answer your question. If that happens there in Rodgers in two weeks, they'll call a penalty. Oh, no question. No <laughs> question. No, that ain't got to happen. They ain't got to hit his helmet. He just got to go, go, go right by. He got some little light wind. <laughs> Here's one other quick thing, and we're going to hear from Matt Nagy uh, after our next time out, after a hugely disappointing day today. If, if you're Mitchell Trubisky, I'm going to ask each one of you, you know your future is not in Chicago. They didn't pick up your option. You've got a throwing shoulder that you had to fly to L.A. to get examined. You're on a team that has not a very good offensive line. They don't run the ball effectively. You don't have a lot of great playmakers. Are you going back out there and playing? And I know Olin would say, I, I know what he'll say. I'm a football player. That's what I do. Turn the lights on, baby. But do Let's you go. Think, find me a game to play? But do you think Mitchell Trubisky's agent is going to say to him, son, you're trying to get a contract somewhere else. Do not go out there and injure that shoulder again, or you will wreck your future. Oh, I think yeah, it's absolutely nuts if he doesn't go out there. Mm -hmm. Like, you're trying to get a contract for the future. You're not just playing for the Bears. Like, let's say you go out the next six or seven games and you change everybody's mind on how they think of you. Yep. Now the Bears, yeah, they didn't pick up, pick up your fifth-year option, but they still can't offer you. They still can't tag you. And if they tag you, what is that, $25 million? Like, I mean, it's just. I mean, your team is 5-5. Five and five. You're 500. You're, yeah. You're not I mean, you're, out of it yet. You're so, not out of it. So you come back, and every time Cap says, can I ask you a question, I feel like I need a drink or something. <laughs> before, I, before I answer one. <laughs> I'm just being Cap's honest. Cap's about to start something. He absolutely yeah. should. I mean, he hey, should play. Yeah, because we don't, we don't play this game very long. So if you got an opportunity to play, man, go play. What's your worth? And you got Detroit, you got Jack, you got some teams yep. coming up that mm -hmm. you can, yep. like you say, go out and play good and win a yep. game. Man. Go out and play good. Gotta have All some right. worth in this game.